Good evening, everyone, and welcome to that sewing blog. It is our 74th episode. That goes by really fast. And tonight we are honored, honored, honored of Rhonda's creative life on the show tonight. Um, she is uh, amazing. Um, yeah, we, we'll get talking to her in a second. First, we'll get rid of all the kind of housekeeping -y stuff. Um, yes, if you have any questions, uh, please put them on the right. Uh, you'll see if you're watching live on Crowdcast, there's a spot to write hello there and welcome to Carol and Kyle and Elizabeth and everyone else is watching tonight. We're thrilled that you're here. And if you have any questions, just to highlight them so we can find them, if you go down below, there's a tab that says ask a question. And once I'm done grilling Rhonda, <laughs> we'll, have <a> <laughs> we'll have a chance for you to put some questions down there because we'd love to hear what you have to say. I'm sure you have lots of questions. So hopefully we'll get them down there. Uh, yes. So uh, Rhonda, uh, I'm sure almost everyone here has seen her vlog before, but there's she's one of those women that you need to scratch the surface and you keep finding more and more and more. Uh, like uh, pilot, <laughs> animal lover. I heard a lovely story in the test, which hopefully she'll share maybe at the end of the, the, the broadcast. Um, writer. Um, Soist, but I mean so much more than just a soist. Your attention to detail is lovely. Um, goodness me, president of the Hope Chicago. Um, I had to write it all down. There were so many things that Rhonda has done, and uh, she just does everything with so much style. And I think that's part of why I, I think I'm attracted to the blog and to her makes. Um, she also writes for So News. She's an award-winning blogger. Uh, just amazing. And I can't thank you enough for being on tonight. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's no problem. I forgot to add interviewer, which is quite a thrill for me because I've never interviewed someone who interviews. So um, and we'll, we'll get to that because I, I do really enjoy your show. So it'll be great to talk about it later. But we always start with a kind of a similar question, because um, we want to know your origin story. And now I know you've been sewing for a long time. You mentioned in some of your uh, talks on YouTube and things um, that you've been sewing since you were young. But I'd love to know, what was the inspiration? What was the thing that got you started? Well, you know, I, I always think about, uh, well, just a little interlude here. I, I used to joke about that my family's been in America so long that they were in the robo behind the Mayflower. And I just <laughs> I actually had someone on the Mayflower. So um, anyway, I I also joke about the fact that I've been sewing since Adam and Eve walked the face of the earth. So just tiny stretch, tiny little stretch. Yeah. I've been sewing for a long, long time. I was uh, five years old. Um, my grandmother was very, very traditional, and um, she felt that that was important. And the fact that I was receptive made it all the better. So my first little project was a paper chip that we embroidered, and then I hand stitched the edges of the paper chip to the silk cover. Okay. Oh, cool. So I was excited. It's very neat that you still have the handkerchief. So you go back in time, so it makes it, you know, pretty old. <laughs> And when did you start sewing clothes specifically? I really started sewing clothes um, on a you know full 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 throttle basis um, when I was about twelve years old, and um, because it was that way I was I no longer was uh, my mother no longer dictated what I was wearing. <laughs> 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 I could get to choose what I wanted to wear and. and I know 
I know. I was actually trying to address a question that one of the audience members had said about that she couldn't hear your sound very well. And it was down a lot earlier, uh, lower earlier, and we couldn't hear her at all. That's why you know, we were sorting some things out before before the show. So she is a lot louder now, but there is a, just a kind of a, a sound there. So so um, we're really sorry about that. We, we did. We even had uh, the IT husband come in and uh, try to fix it up. And uh, it's definitely a lot better than it was. So um, we we uh, appreciate your patience um, and yours, Rhonda, and our guests. It's great hearing about your origin story about sewing and um, yeah, hearing about you trying to make your skirts a little shorter because um, I was the same way, although now I'm the opposite. I'm like, yeah, I, I, that's too short. If I sit down, I don't like that. It's funny how things kind of come full circle. Um, Another thing that we're often quite interested in is your ed background or education. And uh, a lot of the people that come on the show are self-taught, um, either sometimes doing courses or watching YouTube videos. Um, but you have you went to design school as well. And I was wondering if you'd speak to that and kind of what the school was like and what you've gained from that. Like, are there things that you still, like you're very thankful you learn now because you can build on those? Well, um, when I was in college, uh, where I went to school, they offered just a few classes, but, you know, when you're 18, I always say when you're 18, you're the smartest you'll ever be in your life, and uh, <laughs> I had one semester of flat patterns, and I thought I knew it all, oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, anyway, um, so, but it wasn't until after my husband and I got married, and um, I, I, decided I'd like to go back to design school and the school that was in Chicago that I really liked at the time it was called Bray Gold. It ultimately became known as Bray College. And then it was sold and now it's the Illinois Institute of Art. So it still exists, but it's just it's kind of changed a little bit over the years. But it was a, when I went it was it was really it was fabulous. The teachers were very, very very particular. Yeah. And, uh, so uh, it, it was just a great, a really a great experience. And it was two years. It was a two-year school. A two years. Two years of flat pattern design and and breaking and and, and we did everything. A millinery fur. Um, so fur as well. Oh, <laughs> most definitely fur. I won a um, very nice award for my fur, and um, then. Uh, there was a company that wanted me to come to work and design for them, but uh, they were just rather far away, and I decided that it was more than I wanted to deal with, so I, I didn't do that. But I still do work with fur, and I enjoy it very much. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a different animal, for sure, uh, than fabric, and but it's, it's a lot of fun to work with. It's a little bit challenging. You need a few special tools, but... I, I do enjoy it very much. And so, um, yeah. So it was it was a great education. I enjoyed it very much. Um, after I left, I did come back and I did teach for a, a period of time. And um, but then there were other opportunities, uh, costume design. Um, I, I did work for a dress manufacturer as a designer for a while, and um, and then I, I decided I just wanted to focus on bridal wear, and I did that for 12 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, talking about your schooling earlier, that wasn't the only award you won as well. You were mentioning there was like three others for your your coats, and no, three in total. Oh, there were, actually, I think I've had about eight, eight different awards. Um, oh. I, won, I won for my fur, I won for millinery, I won for um, outerwear, um, I can't remember, it's been a long time ago, I can't remember what all I won, but um, I know uh, I was with some friends one night, and we had gone to a, a millinery show, and someone introduced me, and the, one of the millinery she was she goes, oh my god, oh my god, it's not the bus. And she happened to have this millinery textbook and she, she pulled it out and my drawing is on the front of that book. And you know, it, it, <laughs> she, she decided she was meeting Elvis Presley. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> my friends thought they Pretty impressive, really. I'd love to track down that book. Do you do you have the book at home? I do. I do. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I'd have to run back upstairs to get it. But um, oh, it's okay. Yeah, sorry. No, no. Um, uh, do you have it on your blog? Uh, not even for now. I'd love to see it some other time. If you don't, yeah, it should. That because that that's really neat. Yeah. I think I did a blog post. I mean, it's been a few years ago, but I did do a blog post where I showed that book. Um, and I think it is still available. Maybe the used versions of it are available on Amazon, but you can find it for sure. Oh, very cool. Published not only there, but also in uh, other publications as well, including So News and Threads. Oh, the Threads, especially, what was the name? There was a top hit in Threads. I wrote down the name of it because I was like, the convertible top? Yeah, we called it a we call it, call it a spin-around top. Yeah. Oh, it, I have a, just in case someone's wondering, um, it, I have a little picture of it here, um, but I just have to say, like, I don't know, you know when something looks so simple, um, what goes into patterns and things, you recognize that it's not as simple as it seems, and then you, you do, you can, you can really appreciate um, what it is, like, the, draping like it might only you know be like if you look at the pattern piece not too many pattern pieces like some things are today but just the fact of how it hugs the body's curves and things i was like oh rhonda it's yeah. lovely <laughs> <laughs> that is truly beautiful i'm gonna have to find that issue of thread somewhere because yeah that that's uh, that's amazing um, but you published in many different places. Do you remember the when you were first published in something, and um, what was that like? Um, well, it would have, the very first time would have been the millinery book where I had my 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 drawing published, and it was it was rather surreal. Um, I know the the woman who wrote the book. She was at our fashion show. Our, fashion show and she came up to me and I thought I thought I didn't I just didn't realize who she was and I thought she might be crazy crazy <laughs> <laughs> she, who's this coming up to me <laughs> well, she didn't really introduce herself and she asked me if I do if I do line drawings of my cat and I said well sometimes I do sometimes I don't and then finally she introduced herself and said that she was doing a new book and she liked very much for my hat to be on the cover if I would do the drawing, the illustration. And sure, sure. So it was it was super, super exciting. It's, it's one of those things that you just it's almost indescribable as far as, you know, to be honored that way and and then to see stuff, you know, see your name and Something that you did, and it's there, and people recognize it. And, yeah, it's yeah. Nice. very, very nice. So it's very lovely. Um, I was reading one of your blog posts, and I found it particularly interesting. It was um, as if by magic, and you were talking about, um, you know, like a lot of times people say you're overnight success or something, um, but there's um, behind the scenes, there's a lot that goes go into it. I love how you said that there's a lot of determination, dedication and continuous pursuit of knowledge knowledge. And I thought, oh my gosh, that's that's you to a T, Rhonda. I mean, if you look at what you've done, not only you can show the determination, the dedication, how you're going, uh, you're constantly trying to learn and the pursuit of knowledge, but also you share it, which I think is quite fabulous. Um, in lots of different ways, which we will get a chance to talk about. But in that particular post, you were talking about how you were actually going back to school uh, in a sort. I guess it's even, it's not really school, it's a higher level education uh, for a Master of Sewing and Design uh, professional certificate. I think that's what it said. 
Well, actually, I, I started to do that a few years back, and then life got in the way. And so that I happens. <laughs> on the whole, and actually, I'm going to start back again in October. But I'll, I'll, I'm going to start all fresh again. Um, more, more for the experience than anything. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great chance uh, for me to... Um, kind of re revisit things that I learned a long time ago and um, kind of make them fresh in my mind again. So, yeah. yeah. I think it's fabulous too that, like you said, life gets in the way. Um, it's true. I mean, you were a very busy woman. You're the president of the, was it the Hope Couture Club of Chicago? I mean, and your blog. I mean, you did. Yeah, some people like me sometimes are lax in putting up blog posts, but I mean, um, over the years since I think before 2009, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but you have, I wrote some, some of them, um, like Sleeve Saturdays, Sunday. Uh, re reflections. Um, then you have Monday morning inspirations. I mean, and I mean, you might hear those sorts of things on, you know, like a uh, blog where they just do little things here and there. But I, I've, I like I'm drawn to them, like the Monday morning inspirations. Oscar de la Renta. I think you found the some of the most beautiful things that were actually on the runway and posted them there. So I mean, if you, if you want to know some fabulous inspiration for future projects, you really do have to check out Rhonda's blog, and I'll put the the link both in the description here and on YouTube. So definitely, definitely go there. But um, yes, your blog isn't, um, it, it would be a lot of work and put on, you know, the president of the Couture Club and this and that. So some people would try to do all those things and maybe not do them all to the, a high standard. So it, I think it's great that you recognize your strengths and what you can carry. And you say, oh, I'll get back to that. But I'm, you, you know, you're focusing on a, a lot of other things. Like, yeah, you're very busy. <laughs> well, at the time when, you know, it's a little bit like my, my, uh, my eyes were bigger than my ability. But at the time, I wasn't the president of the tour, but I was the president. I just stepped down, actually, as the president of the American Office Society of Chicago. And it was a, it was a big job. And I was president for six years, and then I was the social chairman for another organization called the Musicians Club of Women, which was a, another big, huge job. And um, those are both done, and um, I'm not taking on jobs that large anymore. So uh, it frees up time for the things that I want to pursue. So yeah, I'm I'm happy that. I can oh. kind of go after some of the things that I would like to have. Because I think that that's what happens sometimes. Um, I'm sure bloggers or uh, people who uh, maybe write a lot for magazines or something might notice too. If, if you feel like, oh, it's all deadlines and it's all on top of you, then you stop enjoying it. And I can tell that this is a passion for you, Rhonda. One of many, actually, um, but it is one of your passions. So it would be a shame if it squashed that the, the spark the, the love that you have for it that shows in everything you do so yeah i mean amazing um i would love to know what started you blogging <laughs> you know the the story is um it's a little it's a, it's a very different story than i'm sure that most people would have but um I, I've, had, I've had some health issues over the years, and um, I do see an acupuncture on a fairly regular basis. And so this is quite a few years ago now, but um, I would come in for an appointment, and she would ask me, did you, did you make what you're wearing? And yes, I did. And you need to be sharing this. You really need to be sharing this. But and she kept pushing and pushing and pushing, and she said, "No." She said, "I, I really think that people would like to see what you do." And and she just she commented that I was I was very generous in how I I I like to help other people. And she said, "I think this would be a wonderful." You know, she said she didn't say to do a blog, but she said you need to find some platform where you can be out there. And so I had actually been at a retreat and I met a woman who is a writer and she had a blog and um, 
it was really the first time I heard about a blog. And um, I always say that I, uh, when it comes to anything with the computer, I, I belong in the remedial class. Um, so anyway, I, I, she talked about the blog, and I thought it sounded rather interesting. And I came home, and I looked up her blog, and then I started looking at other blogs. And I thought, well, okay, I think I'll do this. And so I wrote my very first blog and blog post. And I had no idea what I was doing. And I actually wrote about, um, I had flown to Kentucky and picked up a whole pile of puppies. And uh, a good friend of mine was with me. And so uh, I wrote about that. And that was it. And that was the one and only post for that year in 2009. And then in 2010. Still didn't know what I was doing and, and just did more posts and then uh, it kind of grew from there. And um, naming it Rhonda's Creative Life was kind of a, a big step for me. Um, actually, I just said, yeah, yeah, I have a creative life. And it, 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 it almost felt like I was kind of. opening myself up to the world, you know, in a very personal way and, and to be able to say that. But it was, it was kind of liberating to me. So that's, you know, it's, it's very unconventional how I got started, but that's, that's really the, the root of it all. Thanks to your acupuncturist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we're still having a little problems with the sound. I apologize. Thank you, Joy, for mentioning it again. We appreciate you guys hanging in there. It's not the, the, when you start off, it was that it was too soft. It was just, it's a little bit tinny, they're saying. Um, would you mind, Rhonda, maybe trying the headset and we'll see if that helps a little bit? Looks like she's almost ready. I'm ready. I will just point out, are you ready? Okay. Um, so I'll just point out, yeah. So she has fabulous stuff here. She has um, her blog, which is amazing. And she was kind enough to mention Myra and I. Uh, Myra is off on a cruise this evening. <laughs> and, um, but also like, like I said, Sunday Night Reflections um, are fabulous. Um, this is something I was hoping to mention and ask you about, Rhonda. Um, there's quite a bit of bad weather that just blew through the states, and which is also there might be some more coming. Um, and this is one thing that you were, one of your friends mentioned to you and that you were going to participate, the Little Dresses for Texas. I wonder if you could tell us a bit more about that. Yes, um, the friend of mine that is really the one that's doing it. She um, she had met a woman in, in Houston that the two have become friends and this lady has um, an outreach program even when there's not a flood and so um, but with the, the flood it encouraged a friend of mine to do these little um, pillowcase dresses and she's hoping to collect a thousand dresses and and of course, thousand. a thousand dresses. And of course, it would be, um, you know, something. You know, now, now that the flood has happened, there's going. It's going to be a very long time before things are back to normal. And you know, with any type of devastation, it always affects the poorest of the poor the most. And um, mm. when I was uh, first out of school. I worked at a, a mission center in a very poor area of Houston, and um, you know the need is always there. So whether the dresses actually go to flood victims or ultimately are given to children that just need something pretty and nice to wear, I think it'll be a, a wonderful thing. So the dresses are not going to um, a hurricane relief. Programs. They're going to a specific person who does, who is able to um, disperse the clothes. So the, the, the little dresses. And, you know, if you think about it, there's nothing nicer than being able to have something new and pretty to be able to put on. And um, so, anyway, I, I've done seven little dresses. And, uh, yeah. Seven. They're, they're, fun. Yeah. they're fun to put together. So, yeah. 
Um, yeah, I think we're still having little technical difficulties. I don't know. Is it something to do with the ladies from Chicago? Because we had really bad uh, sound issues with Corsonetta Burwell from the Mahogany Styles, who is lovely. And uh, I don't know. We haven't had any problems in years. And then this is like another one. So I'm very sorry. But um, I, so I might just repeat some of the things you say in case they miss little bits. But yeah, you've made seven dresses. Um, and uh, for this great cause, because you're right, often when there's a, a tragedy like this, it is the poor that poor population that are hit the most. So I think these will be absolutely fabulous. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's lovely that you do that. Um, goodness, yes. So I, I'm also just, I can't wait to ask, because I have a personal question. I'm not person, you're personal, but a question for me mostly. Um, I also enjoy your So Busted um, your videos where you interview people and it's, it's quite a wide walk of people and you don't have these sort of, you know, internet connection issues because you're one on one, which must be very lovely. <laughs> but, um, yeah, as an interviewer or if anyone else is hoping to interview one day, do you have any advice? Like you ask very good questions without, you don't make it all about you. You seem to pull the best out of your guests. So I was wondering if you had any advice for someone like me who is trying to become <laughs> Uh, a better interviewer like yourself. <laughs> I, I appreciate that very much. But um, I usually spend um, maybe about an hour with them before we actually do the interview. So I talk to them and um, find out what they're passionate about, what they like. Um, you know, the, the primary goal with those uh, interviews is that so many people are, are it, it, it almost seems like it's on a daily basis that stores close and we wonder where our resources are going to come from. We feel like people, you know, we know people are sewing because we see each other on the internet, but what about our resources? Where, where are things going to come from in the future? And so I thought in doing these interviews that to show that people are still, they're, they're working in the industry, they're, they're producing, they're doing, it's exciting, it's different, definitely it's different, but it, it still is happening. And so, yeah, like I said, I spend about an hour with them beforehand, and we just chat and see what they're doing. And so I have a good, um, fresh <laughs> knowledge of what we just talked about, and then we go from there. And and I, I like to keep it short, you know, so you know, no more than thirty minutes. I I remember um, a, a concert that my husband and I had gone to, wonderful guitarist, his name is Doyle Dyke, and um, it came to the end of the concert and he said, Well, I'm going to be wrapping it up soon and my husband said, We're not in a hurry to go anywhere, which kinda of shocked me because my husband doesn't do that. And um, and I'll never forget what Doyle said in return. He said, believe me, I've learned that I can play longer than you can listen. And so I thought, what a, what a wonderful lesson about, you know, keeping things a little bit short, you know, not going too long so they don't um, wear out people's attention. And so, like I said, I, keep, I try to keep it to about 30 minutes and, um, cover the basics of what they're doing and where they can be found and anyway it's fun. Oh cool thank you for that we appreciate the the advice I liked it a lot and uh, yeah I definitely enjoy watching you interview people from old schoolmates to people who do fitting um, teachers that well it wasn't your school it was the school that replaced the school after your school wasn't it the right. in, uh, Insti Illinois Institute of Design I think it was yeah so yeah. that very very interesting. Um, I was hoping that maybe now you could talk about um, the Chicago, the whole Couture sh sh uh, Club of Chicago. I, I keep wanting to mix all those words up. I'm very sorry, but it sounds like a fascinating uh, club. I, I wish I lived a little bit closer to Chicago. I used to live in uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan, and I, I would have been there every time you had something. Like on the night you have Sonetta Burwell, um, we mentioned her just a little bit a while ago, doing a, a shirt um uh kind of i guess it would is it a tutorial or talk um, um her talk will be about a 40 minute 45 minute talk and um, 45 minute talk uh 
talking about how to how to construct a church, tips that she picked up in doing that. Um, this year in particular, I really wanted to try to showcase some of our members because we have members who do some fabulous things. So um, a number of our programs will feature our own members, and um, I'm really excited about that. But the organization has been around for a very long time. Um, I'm going to get this wrong, but I'm, I'm kind of close anyway. Um, it's been around for over 50 years. And, um, oh. yeah, and it, it's early, early on, it looked different. Um, the woman, um, her name was Lisa Barker, and um, she was a tailor, and she had very specific ideas about how things should be. And, um, so uh, they, you had to be in her class in order to be in the fashion show. And, um, but then it grew, and sadly, she died. But those that were in the organization, they loved it so much, and they kept it going, and um, drafted bylaws. And so um, we do have, we have um, our monthly meetings from, from September uh, through June. Um, we don't meet in January, and in December and in June, we have a, a banquet, we have a holiday banquet and a June banquet, and then in May, the first weekend of May is our fashion show, and um, uh, we'll, we'll have anywhere from um, two to three hundred people attend our fashion show. And wow, have, two or three hundred people, that's amazing yeah, for an attendee. Last year, we awarded two fashion students with awards. Uh, they, they showed their designs at our fashion show, and um, they were awarded designs. And this year, we'll be working with the Illinois Institute of Art again, and um, we'll branch out just a little bit and uh, uh, have another competition with their uh, graphic design program um, so that they, they have, they'll have the opportunity to design our uh, program booklet, um, which wow. will be on our tickets and all, you know, so the media for the show. So we're, I'm, I'm really excited about that because students, you know, they need to build their their uh, portfolio. So I thought this is for them to do. Yeah, it's like how you got your sketch on the cover of a book. Right. You're giving them an opportunity to to do something that isn't schoolwork, it's bigger, it's published, it's it's recognized on a wider scale. So that's fabulous um, that you support them that way. Right. It definitely, but it, it sounds like an amazing club. I mean, uh, two dinners, um, one amazing fashion show, and a monthly meeting. And I, I would quickly scroll through, and there's a lot of really interesting things. I mean, it might only be once a month, those, but uh, very interesting. And I believe that um, it's it's quite reasonably priced, and it, you don't actually have to be from Chicago. No, is that correct? No, you don't. And our, our yearly dues are thirty five dollars. Yeah, so I can show everyone here just really quickly, um, and I'll put the the link up um, for you. That uh, this is they have a website as well. Um, I think this is the. This is the index here at home. So it's the Hope Couture uh, Club Chicago.com, the name that I keep trying to get backwards. So we'll put that in here in case anyone's interested. It sounds like an awesome opportunity um, to improve your skills, to learn from um, professionals and uh, fellow group members that are very talented, like Sonetta, like yourself, whoever is, is holding um, um, the uh, tutorial or lecture, yes. Uh, I, I think that's amazing and to think that, you know, being a president would probably take up quite a bit of time. I mean, I can't even imagine how much goes into the fashion show alone. Forget about organizing all the monthly stuff. So <laughs> maybe quite a bit. Well, I, I have to say there are, we have a, a wonderful, wonderful board. So it makes my job much, much easier. And um, because they do their job beautifully, we have a webmaster, treasurer, uh, membership chairman, a program chairman, um, fashion show chairman, uh, someone who does our news, uh, one of our, our members who does a beautiful job with our newsletters. So, and I'm leaving someone out, I'm sure, but 
they they're all just <laughs> fabulous, fabulous. So it's really and truly, I don't count. So uh, because they, <laughs> they really they they keep they keep the train rolling for sure. Oh, they sound like a talented group of people. Mm -hmm. I just wish Chicago was a little closer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. From Ontario, it is a little bit far. But if you yeah. ever visit Chicago on the first Saturday of the month, we'd love to have you. Oh, I had to ask my husband. I just uh, came back from a trip to from Male Pattern Boldness Day in New York, so I might have to wait a couple of months. But I would absolutely love it. It looks uh, there's so many exciting things that you guys have there to sign up and tr like to learn about. So please check that out um, if you're watching this tonight. And also, speaking of something else that you can't miss, um, you also have a YouTube channel where you put some of your the So Busted Material Witness shows. And I wanted to make sure everyone knows uh, where to find that. So if they search your name, Rhonda Bus, or um, So Busted, um, you will find it. And uh, just so you know, if you got to the right place, it looks like this. Um, and yes, you do have some, like I said before, some fabulous videos. Um, here's some of them here. Um, talking about so long uh, as well as some tips how to make a triangle shaped buttonhole and all your shows which are fabulous but your most recent one was very interesting it was your so busted um closet <laughs> um you know a lot of some people might be a little nervous you know talking about some of the things in their closet but it was very entertaining um not only going into your closet but hearing how you talk about some of the pieces um, um how much you um love some of the things you've picked up and also the things you've made like your ribbon skirt and if you haven't already checked that out on her blog you definitely should um uh if you've noticed you can see just a little tiny piece of it in our show card um but um you've made an entire skirt out of it was what four different types of ribbon right four different types of ribbon it, that's very impressive um and on her blog you can see uh you know like you pin it down and how you do it because as always anytime you do a tutorial or something there's lots of photos easy to follow instructions um so it, it's really fabulous and just seeing everything that you love in your wardrobe and and how you're starting to think about your wardrobe was very interesting so the people should definitely check that video out too um was it fun to make it were you a little nervous about you know filming in your closet no 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 <laughs> uh, there will be a part two where I, I show a little more. Um, so there will be a part two. There, there were, I, I had said that if they were interested, that I would do another another closet uh, interview, a uh, um, YouTube a video, and uh, talk a little bit more about some of the things that I have in my closet that you would, have, you know, that I, for whatever reason, I don't have on the blog, but. It's still kind of fun to see, yeah. Oh, so that's coming and, up. That's, that's coming up. Well, I look forward to that. Um, and before we talk about um, some of those things, um, I mean, what's showing up here, uh, which is lovely. I didn't mean to share this yet, sorry. <laughs> um, I was going to say one of the questions of Myra's here, um, she asks a couple questions each week, which I always love to hear the answer for. And one of them would be, what was one of the things or, you know, a couple of things that you are really proud that you made, like one of the things that really stands out for you. And I believe that this one here is one of um, them for you, the zebra dress. Yeah. And I mean, looking at it, oh, wow, that's like a, a wow, wow, wow kind of dress. Can you tell us a little about uh, this dress? Um, yeah, I actually wore it to a, uh, we have we have one of the last three views here in Chicago. Called and they have a big fundraiser every summer, and I wore it to that um, fundraiser. So it was terrifying. But this was part of a, um, and you can see the shirt, which is a little bit shocking to think that that pattern actually originated with the shirt, but it did. I know. So it's, wow. So what I, what I, I like for people to be able to do is, is look at a pattern and see the possibility that it's not just a pattern, it's, it's a foundation, it's a blueprint for, for so much more. And, you know, that you can actually take it that far that it would become something like that. So that basic little shirt could actually become a pretty striking dress. Oh, and a very striking dress. Like, 
Uh, that is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, and I, I have noticed that in a lot of the projects, including your So Long for So News and various other things. Um, and, and, and even um, the top we were talking about that you did for threads, you just seem to have this knack for finding really interesting fabrics and matching them to really stylish. Um, I mean, yes, they're fashionable, but it's not heavy on fashion and light on style. Like you, it's timeless uh, style. You have a real knack for that. And this is just another example, Rhonda. This is gorgeous. Um, how many hours did you put in to make that? Because it looks like it must have taken forever. Yeah. I, I, I have no idea, but it, it really didn't take that long. It, it really oh, wow. Did. Yeah. So it's fantastic. And I have another one here. And uh, you sent this one to me, uh, this photo as well. I was wondering if you could tell us a bit about this. Is this one that you were um, very proud of, or was it a, a tricky one? No, you know, it was just, it was fun because that was a, a Sandra Bettina coat. And um, I think we did that, I think for the Haute Couture Club, it was a, a pattern that we chose for the club to do. And I had, it was actually a double page tool. And, but I, I didn't really treat it like a double page tool. I just had the facing. But I had that big yellow collar and I thought it was because it's the yellow was the back side of the blue and I felt it needed something more and so um, believe it or not, the idea for that the testamentary that I did on the collar came from the movie Dave. If you remember a long time ago it was a Tom Hanks movie about where he went to be big and there is a scene where he goes on a date with this woman that he works with, and this doesn't look exactly like it, but it's where it, it was inspiration. She had this fabulous jacket and uh, coat outfit, and it had testamentary design on it, and I thought, hmm, that's what I want to do. So I, I didn't have a lot of fabric left to do uh, the design on the collar, so I just kind of had to make it work. And um, and I was very happy with how it came out. So it's, it's one of those nice things to just that you throw on, and it looks great whether you put it on with a skirt or with jeans. It just it just always looks great. Makes me smile. You must get a lot of compliments when you go out because um I, I like that. Yeah, I mean. You, you don't just sew the patterns as they may, are made in the envelope. Um, you make your own patterns as well. But then you also do gorgeous things like that, um, em, embellishing or taking a, a, a blouse or a, a, a shirt pattern and turning into the zebra dress. And I mean, a lot of a lot of people are going to be like, oh, my gosh, it's so amazing. Like, I could never do anything like that. All I've done is sewn from patterns. But then if you go on your website, your 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 Saturday sleeves, sleeves on Saturday. I might be mixing it up. Sleeves, sleeves <laughs> but, on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, even that, like you take of that pattern you have that you've made six of because you love it, scroll down, find a sleeve, and then in there it shows very clear, I think, instructions and how you can take that pattern you've already done and you and just refresh it completely. And I think you do that great for other people, beginners and other people just wanting to see something new, but you do that with like a lot of your clothing, like seeing that extra detail on the coat, that's quite lovely. You must have like a lot of wheels turning in there, of, you know, okay, I'm doing this for this project. How am I going to make it more Rhonda? I, I say I have the attention span of a gnat. So, you know, I, I, I split from one thing to another. <laughs> this, this means you have, want to learn everything. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> No, rude not to. So if you're watching this on YouTube, remember you can watch us live on Crowdcast. Just look for the link in the That Sewing Blabs Facebook page and you could join us. And if anyone in the question uh, comments has a question, um, they could put it in the Ask a Question tab uh, if you're watching loud on Cry Crowdcast. And if you'd like to come on camera and ask a question, please just let me know in the comments. We'd love to have you on if you have a question for our fabulous guest. Um, yes, you told me a fabulous story because I mean, you're not all sewing. I mean, a lot of your life, I imagine, is sewing and in style, I might add. Um, 
And but there's a lot more to you too. Like uh, we mentioned that you fly a plane, and anyone who's watched your videos will know that because often they're done from an airport. But you told me the most amazing story of you rescuing a dog, and I hope you don't mind sharing it again because <laughs> I thought that was just lovely. <laughs> um, I think the story I told you was about flying to Missouri to pick up a dog. It was a, an Airedale, and at the time I was I did a lot of flying for um, a, the Midwest Airedale um, Rescue Group, and um, they were they were always very kind. They never asked me. Uh, to, they they would try to get ground transport first, um, but they would ask me to fly dogs that were um, um, maybe a a little bit difficult or there was an issue. And actually, I'm going to tell you a different story because this one is funny, and I, I always think it's nice when you get to laugh about things. And um, <laughs> This one is, I actually, I flew to St. Louis, it was in Airedale, and they, they asked me to go and get the dog because they said he was a flight risk. And a flight risk. Flight risk. That, <laughs> that if passing him from one car to another, if he got away, he would end up in Canada because he was a runner. So they asked me if I would fly the dog, and he was coming to Chicago. So I, I, I flew down to St. Louis to pick up the dog to bring him back to Chicago. And it was the, the first time that on a, a flight like that that my mother had gone with me. And so we picked the dog up and it was it was really my fault. The the case, it was a two piece case, so the top screwed to the bottom. And I thought I had the top screwed securely to the bottom. But when we took off, the dog was very anxious and he started jumping. And when he jumped up, he was able to pop the top up enough that the door fell in to his cage and there was just a small small little space but he was actually able to wedge his head out between the cage and the side of the plane and my mother said he's eating the airplane so he was eating <laughs> the poultry on the door and she said so I yelled at him you know Stop that! And of course, you know, he looked up at me, and so my mother said, "Well, what are you going to do?" And I said, "Well, I'm going to land." Well, she didn't realize it was a, an airport right underneath us. She was thinking I was going to land in a field, and she actually, "Oh, oh my God! <laughs> we're we're going to land at the airport. It's actually right underneath us, and it was just a little country airport, and." Um, so I was able to find someone who was working on their plane and get some wire. And then when we looked in the in the, the cage, you know, the dog was quite anxious, and you know, things can happen when you're anxious. And yeah. so she said, "Well, are you know, are we going to clean?" And it's number one, not number two. So uh, she okay. said, "Are we going to, you know, what? We'll need to take him out." And I said, "I'm not taking him out because they said he would run. So he's just going to have to sit there." So, I actually delivered him to someone who was adopting, adopting him, and I, I felt bad because it was this little piece of dog by the time we got back to Chicago. But at least he made it in one piece, and my mother didn't land in a field, and everything was fine. So, so, but there's, there's, been, there's, been a, there's been a lot of fun, fun times. I, uh, I had a I had a trip to um, Arkansas once, and on my way there, the, it was just one of those days that all pilots love. It's just glassy skies, easy flying, and when I was there, I noticed that the wind just picked up. And um, when I took off, I it was the worst turbulence I ever. It was hor horrible, and I, I kept thinking I would get out. I would get out. And so another pilot had flown down from Wisconsin to meet me because the puppies, I had eight puppies, and they were going to um, Wisconsin. And he had said that his flight from Wisconsin to Chicago was the worst he had ever experienced. And so he called and found out that I was in even worse weather. And so when I landed, he came running out to the airplane and he said, he asked, are you okay? Are you okay? And I said, well, I'll say this. The puppies have peed, they've pooped, they've thrown up, and they've 
done nothing that I have not felt like doing for the last three and a half hours. Oh, oh my gosh, that must have been nerve wracking. You know, but, it was just, it was very tiring, very, very tiring, but you know. It's, it's a good thing you're a very good pilot. It's just part of it, part of the, part of the fun. Well, um, our last question before we do a little bit of community news um, is I would love to know um, what you see in the future, maybe for your blog, your your show, your interviews, your sewing life, anything. Um, I mean, I know that you're planning to put out some patterns, uh, a pattern, which we're very excited about. And you do have some free patterns on your site. When we were looking at our site earlier, the, the beret one is particularly nice. Um, please check those out. But what's gonna what's the future for Rhonda's creative life oh my so you surprised me <laughs> um, you know I I just like to see how things go and um, I'm going to be doing a, a good bit of teaching um, uh, two conventions one here in, in uh, the Chicago area and then one in Virginia and then I'm doing a program for uh, an ASC group in um, Kalamazoo, Kalamazoo, Michigan, yeah. and then I'm doing another program in um, Indianapolis, and that's, that'll be the first weekend of November, and I'm excited about that. So um, I'll be traveling just a, a little bit, and um, hmm. and then I'm hoping to do some uh, retreats next year as well, with a focus on um, repurposing fur, uh, especially that deserves to be repurposed. And um, yeah. so we'll go from there. And, you know, the sky's you know, the limit. That, you know, you can always plan for the future, and then sometimes the future turns around and laughs right at you because yeah. it has a whole different plan. So. Yeah, that is too true. It, I do find that often. You think you're going one way, and um, but I do find, uh, I would definitely say there's a higher power at work. Um, you might not know you're on one path and you end up on another, but you can use something from that other path and or you've grown from that other path and everything's helping you move. Even if you didn't imagine this direction, everything from the past, it's like it's a plan. It's helping you move. So I'm sure all the little steps along the way have helped you become the woman you are and the woman we love to read your blog posts. So um yeah i really can't thank you enough for coming on and i i, I apologize again for the sound issues i'll talk to crowdcast and see if there's anything on on that end but thank you so much for coming on tonight thank you for having me quite an honor thank you <laughs> and definitely make sure you check out her interviews they they won't have any sound problems <laughs> they're fabulous and they're on youtube um yeah so we're just gonna do a quick bit of um, community news here. Uh, yeah, it was just lovely of you to spend the time with us. And I know all of us will be reading your blog and checking out your next video. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you again, it's quite an honor. I appreciate you asking, thank you. Oh, no problem. <laughs> and yes, make sure to tell us when your pattern's ready because I, I, I'm really looking forward to it. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> me, me too. <laughs> And thank you for everyone who watched this evening, who stuck it out through some of our sound issues. Please join us next week when we start the So You Think You Can Sew competition. And uh, yes, we will have a lot of fun. I can't wait. And yeah, thanks again, Rhonda. And have a great night, everyone. Bye. Bye.